Hello, my friends. At lunch, when I ate a mutton chop, very rarely happens to me, looking at the bone, I suddenly have an explanation of the mystery of Adam and Eve, first man and first woman created 6,000 years ago, according to the Bible, contradicting scientific discoveries that trace our ancestors back millions of years. Sometimes I have understanding of the universe of sacred texts that comes to me in a dazing way, which must then be developed with much more time. I record the point which seems essential to me from the narratives. Genesis. God molded man with clay from the ground. God planted a garden in heaven. God made all kinds of trees to grow from the ground. God took the man and established him in the Garden of Eden to cultivate and keep him. But from the tree of knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day when you eat it you shall be put to death. All wild beasts and birds of the skies and brought them to mind to see what he would call them. He took one of his ribs and closed the flesh in its place. God shaped a woman and brought her to man. Then he cried out, This is the bone of my bones and the flesh of my flesh. They heard the footsteps of Yahweh God walking in the garden in the breeze of the day. I heard your step in the garden, said the man. First of all, it is absolutely impossible and impossible to hear God walking with pure consciousness, light, energy. Then, who can this God be who has a name, Yahweh or Jehovah? And his creations of Eden are very limited to a region described in the text probably located to the north of Mesopotamia. To get an idea, one only has to remember a film released a long time ago entitled The Gods Have Fallen on Their Heads. One could see a very primitive population in the depth of the forest, without any contact with the rest of the world, who received an empty bottle of Coca-Cola, fallen from a small plane. They began to worship it as an idol sent by the gods who flew over them in their magic apparatus. There have been many such examples in history when a more developed civilization encountered another more primitive one. One of the reasons that enabled a handful of Spaniards to conquer an immense empire is that they were taken for gods foretold by prophecies. So, a highly developed civilization came perhaps from Central Asia. No long ago, traces were found in the great desert of these regions, not even really ruins, of a very large, extremely ancient city having generated an important civilization totally disappeared, even in memory. And there are other examples. Speaking in modern language, it seems that a team, an expedition, was sent from this city or another to explore. At his head, a chief abode called Yabe. He established a colony and built a center with a large garden. However, he needs manpower to take care of it. Personally, nearby there is an extremely primitive people. He chose the one he creates smarter than the others. That he gets out of his fifth is mad. It is known that prehistoric peoples frequently cover their bodies with mud of various color to protect themselves from insects and for clan reasons. See the movie The War of Fire. And also, 
will tell someone that we got out of nothing. I brought you out of the mud of the creek. With time and the very frequent poetic deformation in the Oriental languages, it becomes that he has shaped it out of clay, clay or dust, according to the translations. He shows him everything so that he can do this job. But there is a far too sophisticated places for him to damaging. Likewise, a laboratory set up in a wilderness area inhabited by very primitive people, as there still are, which would not use local personnel, should prohibit certain areas that are too fragile or dangerous. The threat of punishing him with death clearly shows that he is only one of many. God certainly would not have considered destroying his one creature for such a small fault in relation to the importance of his creations. By leading man to say what he calls things, he simply works as an anthropologist to learn the language of the primitive. As for the rib, he simply taught him a lesson of biology and sexuality. He taught him what the rib he had between his legs at time served and which contract in the flesh when it is not longer in action. Contemplating the small rib of sheep or lamb, the relationship with a male erection becomes evident, especially with a man rib. Even in the early 19th century, explorers in Polynesia discovered peoples who made absolutely no connection between the sexual act and the fact of having children. They believed that they were sent to them by spirits or gods without making the connection with copulation. Many other peoples were unaware of this link. This is why under the chalk of this revelation, Hayden realizes that in a certain way he has given birth to the woman whom the Yahweh's team has been seeking from the other primitives. That she is flesh of his flesh, since it is his sex that generates all the humans. It's funny. Everyone seems to find it normal for a snake to speak. Nobody seems to wonder that in the Bible is the only animal that talks. To my knowledge, only in the fairy tales or stories for young children do animals speak. Obviously, it's not the animal. This is how it came to mind in the figurant that accompanied my lamb chop. The person designated under this name was a lieutenant and assistant to the Grand Chief. When he learned of Adam's prohibitions against touching or using a certain object or device, he must have thought that that man was intelligent enough to be able to use it. He left the bride on her neck and suggested to Eve to get her to try it out. However, Adam must have made a mistake serious enough to kick him out. Not accepting his responsibility, he threw it on the bastard, this camel, this dog, this snake. It was not an animal, but an insult. Moreover, it may not even have been a fault, but an inability to properly perform the task that had been assigned to him was motivated his dismissal. For, Despite the death treat, Yahweh kindly dismissed him. Yahweh God made coats of skin for man and his wife and clothed them with them. Then, after having them he removed, he posted in front of the Garden of Eden the cherubs and the flame of the dazzling sword to, to keep the way of the tree of life. The cherubs are simply warriors of Yahweh's team, who spin their sword reflecting the sunlight to frighten Adam and Eve and to spend them away. The tree of life is, similarly, 
the easy life in this well ordered orchard in opposition of the vagaries of wild picking. Then they return to the midst of their primitive people, to whom they will teach what they have been taught, while continuing to have links with the colony led by Ayabe. They supply it with hunting and agricultural products. The story being told by the descendants of the primitive is hallowed with marvelous. If it had been told by the member of civilization who came to plant the Garden of Eden, the version would have been very different and much more realistic. As for saying that Adam and Eve are the first men, we can say they are the first men aware of their humanity in their people, their tribe. Formerly, the names of tribes such as the Inuit, the Chechen, the Uyghurs, etc. mean men in their language. All sorts who did not belong to their clan, their tribe, were not considered as men. To see the colonization of Africa, especially slavery, justified because it was saying that the blacks were not men, or the conquest of the East Indies, and the question that were in Valladolid about the humanity of the Indians of America. In a nutshell, Adam and Eve were the first Hebrew and not the first humans. And all of this came to my head in a split second looking at a long chalk 